Hi, welcome to Best in Tesla. Toyota's coming CEO was out saying they will ramp up EVs. Sandy Monroe has said that this new CEO could turn things around. But I think there is too much evidence showing us just how difficult it is for the old boys to make EV production in high volumes. So I'm going to do something I rarely do. I disagree with Sandy on this one. I think no man on the planet right now could save Toyota. They are just too little, too late. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So, Toyota's CEO was out saying that they will ramp up EVs. So that sounds great, but their targets are still the same. 3.5 million EVs by 2030. So what are they actually ramping up? No one knows. They are just ramping up and letting its shareholders know. Okay. So, as the coming CEO said in a statement, this is not a fast pivot toward battery EVs, adding that much of the problem stemmed from one-off communication about Toyota's strategy. To the point that we have been slow at battery EVs projects, I think around half of it is a communication issue, he said. Now, that is sad if that is true, that Toyota no longer knows how to communicate within the company when it comes to change. They only know how to do what they already do. Yes, change is very, very difficult. But this is what it's all about, to change the company and put it on a new course. But I think Toyota is too little, too late but also being forced by the government to focus on hydrogen. I'm not going into the whole thing about hydrogen again. If you don't know why hydrogen cars will never work, check out this video I made, link down below. But I think this change for Toyota is going to be much harder than someone like Sandy Monroe seems to think. Take a listen to this video of Sandy Monroe. So let's go to the, the turning point, I think, uh, for the, the other uh, company that I thought was in deep trouble, and that's Toyota. I've changed my mind. I put out a little thing on uh, Twitter actually today uh -huh. and said, uh, uh, I take back half those nasty <laughs> things I said about Toyota. I think they may be going in the right direction now. So we'll what see. do you think? Of well, I have never met uh, uh, Sato-san, but I, um, I've heard plenty about him. And um, he used to run Lexus. And I believe that... Um, I believe that he will have a small cooling off period and then he's going to move full steam ahead, probably 180 degrees different than, uh, than uh, Toyota-san. Yeah, so. I bet you're right. But I think this is too late, no matter how great this guy is. But I'll get back to that in a second. Firstly, I wanted to address the problem with the Japanese government that they really want hydrogen to become a thing because Japan has to import all of its fuel and they have given up on nuclear after the Fukushima incident. So they are highly focused on getting the hydrogen fuel to work. So they give huge subsidies to automakers to make hydrogen cars, but the problem is that it is leading them down the wrong road compared to the rest of the world. Hydrogen is going nowhere. So when we listen to the first statement here from Koizato, the coming CEO of Toyota, that is not rising the EV target, saying they will still pursue many different powertrains, it does not sound to me like he is willing to go against his own government and not waste time and money on hydrogen and hybrids. So I have to bet against Sandy on this one, as I don't believe he can make this big ship that is sailing in a thick, sticky sea of Japanese culture turn 180 degrees in time, because they are kind of forced to stick with hydrogen, even though Toyota knows electric car is the right way. Toyota admitted electric cars are better as their engineer for the Marai said 
Elon Musk is right. It's better to charge the electric car directly by plugging it in, said Tanaka. Hydrogen has a place as a viable alternative to gasoline, he added. But I think he's forced to add that, or the government support will end very quickly. So Toyota knows EVs are the right way to go, but they can't because of their government. And it's not like Toyota has shown great promise with their EVs they have made so far. We have to remember that Toyota's first attempt of an EV has been a disaster. Everyone was recalled and they have been out admitting that it was simply too expensive to produce. So the EV platform they had made was too expensive to produce for them, so they have to revamp their EV strategy. And that all sounds good, but how long will that take? They have pretty much been one of the last to come out with the first EV, and now they want to start all over again. And we know from Joe Justice that Toyota is one of the most lean automakers on the planet, except for Tesla of course, and can move the fastest within what they do. So they can implement a new product development within two and a half to four years. But here we are not talking about a completely new car, but the next cycle of an already existing model, and with something they already know how to do, ice cars. So if they start from scratch now, how long do you think it will take them to come out with a whole new EV platform that they will build up from scratch? I doubt they can do that within the next five years. So if they have the next electric car out on the next EV platform by 2028, it will be too late. This is when the race is pretty much over. That is when Toyota will really start to enter the race. Because we might see a new EV on the road next year to make some hype and noise for Toyota and show the world that they are making EVs. But if it is still on the old platform, it is completely irrelevant because we know they will never make those EVs at scale as they lose a lot of money making these cars. Now, the next step is to watch how fast can Toyota make a completely new EV platform and get a car in production with that technology and ramp that up to high volume because no one should come out and say, but they have a hundred years of experience, they can ramp up like there's no tomorrow. I think we have too much evidence now showing that the old guys have huge trouble with producing EVs. GM has been doing this for six years now and has no real volume to show for it. In 2022, they sold less than 40,000 EVs and is having huge trouble getting any meaningful production numbers. I mean, the Hummer EV sold 849 units in 2022, for crying out loud. And Ford has just stopped production of their F-150 Lightning because of issues with the battery module. This is not a good sign, because we have to remember that Ford does use the same kind of power cells from LG that GM is using in their Bolt that has had huge battery issues, and last year all bolts was recalled, costing GM $2 billion. So hopefully this is not the same case, but if I was Ford, I would be really scared putting all these pout cells into all these EVs that Elon did warn them about, as he tweeted, probability of thermal runaway is dangerously high with large pout cells. Tesla strongly recommends against their use. But they didn't listen to Elon and used pout cells anyway. And Ford uses the exact same cell from LG that GM does. GM had to pay a high price for it and have even been out admitting that they are going to shift from pout cells to cylindrical cells now, even though they said back in the days that pout cells was superior. But they had to learn it the hard way as I wrote about in this article for my executive producers this week. But all of this is just to show how the big boys are stumbling with EV production. Volkswagen has admitted that they can only produce their inferior ID3, three times slower than Tesla spent on producing their Model 3. Both Ford and GM are having huge trouble with batteries, showing us how ramping up EV production is a struggle for them. After two years of production of the Mark E, they are still only producing about 70,000 in all of 2022, where the Model Y that only started production six months before the Mark E became the fourth best-selling car in the world in 2022. Quite the difference there, and a good showcase of how difficult it is for the old guys. 
And at last, Toyota's first BE attempt was a complete failure. So I don't like betting against Sandy as he knows the industry better than I will ever do. But I just can't see how a new CEO can change all of this fast enough to save Toyota from becoming the next Nokia. With a government pulling them in the wrong direction, we see the other old boys in the industry struggling all the way. But they have at least started years ago making BEVs and are really trying to ramp up. But Toyota has to start now from scratch once again to create a whole new platform, but can only go half in as they still need to make hydrogen gas as well. This will not end well for Toyota or Japan. That is running their auto industry into the ground with Toyota being one of the biggest and most indebted company in the world. And Japan's economy is not looking that great. This could be a big blow to Japan, not just the automakers. So I think Sandy Monroe is wrong on this one. Toyota cannot be saved. Not even Elon Musk would be able to stop this ship from sinking. It's too little, too late. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>